In this video, we will review the use cases supported in AOS CX 10.3. The first use case is use case number one, centralized layer three gateway with the extent eVPN. So in this example, we have a port, a data center port with two spine switches. So additional spine switches can be added definitely in future to provide more bandwidth to the leaf switches. And we have three leaf switches and you can actually add more leaf switches as well to provide higher port density towards the servers. So this spine and leaf topology provides equal cost multipathing for traffic between the leaf switches. In this use case, right now, in this example, we have two uplinks from a leaf switch. So if a third spine comes in, there will be a third uplink. The leaf switches will load share traffic when multiple equal cost uplinks exist. So one of the leaf switches, body leaf tree, Will function as the border leaf for traffic to get in and out of the port is not mandatory you can also use leaf 2 as the border leaf but the border leaf basically has the default gateways for the different subnets and you can use vrfs to isolate traffic in this use case we use ospf area 0 to provide loopback connectivity between all the switches in order for them to build the VXLAN tunnel. So OSPF Area 0 also provides the ability for IBGP to peer. IBGP is used for EVPN peering. That's the control plane for the VXLAN tunnels. The spine switches will be configured as route reflectors, EVPN route reflectors, so that the leaf switches do not need to have a full mesh IBGP pairing between all of them. The leaf switches only need to pair with the RRs. In this case, leaf 1 and leaf 2 function as layer 2 VTAPs to provide layer 2 connectivity between the leaf switches. So what I mean by that is, for example, 1.10 and 1.11, because they are on the same subnet, they can communicate through this tunnel directly between the leaf switches. And the border leaf functions as a layer 2 and layer 3 VTAP because it routes between the subnets. It also provides connectivity to the core network out of the port. In this example, I have two VRFs. VRF A, the red VRF, and VRF B, the blue VRF. So traffic between each VRF is not allowed. So for example, 1.10 cannot communicate with 2.11 because they're in different VRFs, but 2.10 can communicate with 3.11 because they're the same VRF B. So traffic between the VRFs and the core network is allowed, but traffic between the two tenant VRFs is not allowed. A firewall can be added at the border leaf to inspect traffic entering or leaving the port. In AOS CX, we use VLAN-based VXLAN. That means each VLAN is mapped to one VNI. So in this example, we have VLAN 11 that's mapped to VNI 11. We have VLAN 12 that is mapped to VNI 12. Each VRF can have multiple VNIs as shown here. So VRF B has VLANs 12 and 13, which are mapped to VNI 12 and 13. The second use case that's supported in AOS CX 10.3 is use case number two, the centralized layer two gateway with the excellent EVPN. In this use case, the border leaf that basically functions as layer two VTAP that connects to a firewall. So this firewall, the centralized firewall will function as a default gateway to inspect all traffic between subnets and for traffic entering and leaving the pod. When you compare this against use case number one, the difference is really on border leaf number three because there are no layer three default gateways configured. It's not configured on the firewall instead. So the border leaf tree will use 802.1Q trunking to forward traffic to the centralized firewall. Traffic on the same subnet between the VTAPs 
does not need to traverse the border leaf. So 1.10 can communicate with 1.11 on the same VLAN, same VNI, through this tunnel. Of course, you do not need to use a dedicated border leaf. You can use, use leaf number two to function as the border leaf if desired. IBGP EVPN route reflectors are used to avoid full mesh IBGP peering between the leaf switches. So now the leaf switches only need to peer with the route reflectors. To summarize, AOS CX 10.3 supports the two use cases mentioned in previous slides. They have been QA validated and tested. So only the 8325 supports VXLAN, IBGP EVPN, and IBGP EVPN route reflector functionality. So EVPN type 2 MAC advertisement routes are supported in 10.3. These advertise the MAC address to all other VTAPs. EVPN type 3 inclusive multicast Ethernet tag route is also supported in 10.3. This is for bomb traffic to be shared across different VTAPs. 10.3 supports IPv4, layer 3 unicast routing in the overlay network. Supports IPv4 layer 2 multicast bump traffic in the overlay network. And it only requires IPv4 unicast VTAPs in the underlay. So there's no need to enable multicast in the underlay network. 10.3 supports VLAN based VXLAN, which is a one to one VNI to VLAN mapping. VXLAN EVPN should always be recommended for production networks. Static VXN cannot scale and is prone to CLI errors because you need to specify all the remote VTAP peers manually. So we really recommend 10 VTAPs max as a general rule of thumb for static VXLAN. Another reason why we do not recommend static VXLAN is because of the flooded learning. With EVPN, there is VGP control plane learning. 